All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. We'll start off worship service with a uh, time of prayer to prepare our hearts for God. God, we love you, we praise you because you are good. Um, we worship you, um, God, and we pray that your will be done here in this place at this time, God, that you come and delight in this time of praise, uh, that we surrender to you, that, uh, that you be made known. Um, God, uh, we lift up your name, you're deserving all, all praise. Uh, please come and take the glory for yourself and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh 
shape your whole name. Yes, I worship your whole
Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this time of worship, for another Sunday, another week that you have given us. Um, God, I pray that our utmost desire would be to know you more. Um, God, no matter um, what the culture may say around us, may we not be distracted, and may we go to your word and go to you in prayer um, and to your Holy Spirit that we would um, be the light and salt in this earth. Um, I pray that you'll continue to watch over us, um, that you'll continue to strengthen us and challenge us. Thank you so much. We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, good morning, church. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, you might be wondering for some of you guys who I am. Um, my name is Sue Lee, and I am serving as the youth pastor at FKBC, and I've been serving here since January of 2018. Um, pastor Jacob has asked me to uh, speak to you guys this morning, um, more just sharing my testimony. Um, for those who may be joining us for the first time, um, don't worry, it's not always uh, testimonies. Um, the Word of God is preached uh, by Pastor Jacob every Sunday, but this morning you'll be hearing a testimony from, from me. Um, I'm also a student at uh, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, and I am currently pursuing uh, my Master's of Divinity in Pastoral and Preaching Ministry. Um, I am married no kids yet, but um, hopefully and prayerfully, uh, the Lord will um, give us children in the future. Uh, just a little background information about myself, just to help you get to know me a little bit more. Um, I was born in South Korea. Um, specifically, the city is called Iksan, uh, which is in the North Chola province. I'm not sure if that helps you in any way, but there it is. Uh, my, my mom and dad, they decided to uh, immigrate to the United States basically when I was uh, one or two years old. can't remember uh, um, if I was what age specifically, but around one or two years old. And I lived in Baltimore, Maryland for most of my uh, childhood years. Um, I went to uh, surrounding counties in the area, uh, lived there, and that's where I grew up. I went through my middle school and high school years as well. Um, I have one younger sister uh, who is pretty much uh, opposite of me in almost uh, every way. Uh, the only thing that we're pretty similar is our sense of humor. Basically, we laugh at the same thing. Um, well, basically, after high school, um, I attended a local college. Uh, the school is called Towson University uh, for my undergraduate studies. Uh, I majored in sports management. Uh, but because of certain circumstances, uh, I never finished my degree at that school. Uh, however, I did go back to school uh, a little bit year, uh, years later uh, to a Bible college instead of going back to that school to pursue my calling as a pastor. I eventually attended a satellite campus of Lancaster Bible College and graduated with my bachelor's in biblical studies. And after searching for nearby seminaries to go to, by God's direction uh, and his will, I was led to uh, the current school I am right now, the seminary in Wake Forest, and led to this church as well. Just a little background information about me. Uh, I would like to next share about um, my uh, salvation testimony to you guys this morning. Um, I grew up in a non-believing home. Uh, my parents weren't spiritual people uh, from what I remember, but I do re vaguely remember going to some Korean like shamanistic ritual places with my parents from time to time, but that's the only thing that I remember. Um, 
the only other spiritual influences I had were from my school in Baltimore, uh, where uh, it was a private Catholic school, and the doctrines of Catholicism was uh, taught to the students. Um, but things started to change when I was around 13 or 14 years old. There was a friend of my mom who was moving from North Carolina to Maryland, uh, but because of circumstances, she needed a place to stay temporarily. And my mom opened up our home to her. And while she was staying at our home, uh, she would go to church on Sundays. And one Sunday, she uh, invited me to go to church with her. I politely <laughs> said no, and that was that, or so I thought. Uh, she would ask me if I wanted to go with her every Sunday every Sunday morning for about two months. And one Sunday, I said yes, and I thought that if I just go this one time, uh, hopefully she'll stop asking me. I remember being guided to the youth service at a separate building at this church that I went to, and I was just trying to do my best to uh, not be awkward. It was awkward. It was pretty awkward. Um, one of the youth leaders introduced me to a few kids around my age, uh, but it looked like they were not very interested in welcoming me. And I reluctantly sat in, the, in one of the chairs, and I just waited for um, whatever that I was at to end. I remember seeing a band on stage uh, leading some songs, uh, which I just stood there because um, I had no idea what was being sung. And then hearing some guy who would come up afterwards, stand in front of everyone and talking to the students and to me. All of it was pretty, pretty odd to me and a little bit uncomfortable, to be honest. Um, I just wanted to, just couldn't wait until this was all over so I could go back home. But I do remember what the youth pastor said that Sunday. Uh, I don't remember much of it, but I do remember hearing about someone named Jesus and something about sin and something related about forgiveness found in Jesus. And after the service was over, I went back home with my mom's friend and she asked me how it was. And I told her that, I asked her if I can come back with her the following Sunday. It was more out of curiosity that I wanted to go back and I just wanted to know more about this whole Christian faith, this Christianity. And from that moment on, I went to church every week. But I didn't go to the youth service, but actually I went to a Korean young adult service. Um, I basically knew an older guy in there who went to the same high school uh, with me, but who recently graduated. Um, but yeah, I just didn't vibe well uh, with kids around my age. Uh, at church, so that's the reason why I went to uh, that service. I went to the young adults ministry um, basically throughout high school, and that is where I was discipled by my small group leader. Uh, he taught me the fundamentals of the faith. He guided me in Bible studies, and he talked with me uh, with things that I was really curious about. Uh, during that time, I wasn't saved. Uh, but as time went by, as I asked more questions and, I, uh, and the Bible study leader guided me through uh, reading of God's Word, studying of God's Word, as my mind was being learned, as I learned more about God, my heart began to be affected as well. And it was through God's Word I was beginning to see of how much of a sinful person that I really was how I could not ever save myself and my need of a Savior. And all by God's grace, I believed and trusted in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now, after I got saved, um, or at the moment I got saved, I didn't have some experience where I felt some kind of feeling that overwhelmed me after I got saved. But there was a different sense of how I lived my life after 
I got saved. I remember being so thankful to God. But as time went by, I noticed that I was still sinning. This made me confused, frustrated me, and also made me very uh, anxious. So confused and frustrated because I thought that my life would now be uh, void of sin. And anxious because I thought that God was upset with me. I saved you and this is how you live was the thought running constantly through my mind. Now at the time, I had no idea of the doctrine of justification, sanctification, glorification. And I was leaning on my own thoughts and my own feelings. Um, I didn't ask people at church because uh, I didn't want to look like I wasn't a good Christian. So I thought that I needed to do as much things at church, and that would give me peace. Uh, I remember going to church a lot and participating and volunteering to as much as possible, whatever, whenever. But soon, not only was I burnt out, I couldn't find peace. But again, by God's grace, all His grace, I was given peace from reading God's Word. He led me to His Word. And I want to encourage those who may be struggling, as I've struggled early in my faith, if you're going through something similar. I want to encourage you to read and, don't just stop reading, and study God's Word. The answers are in God's Word. God's Word is sufficient. And from that moment on, I leaned on God's promises in His Word and depended on Him in living a life of submission and obedience and striving for holiness through God's grace. Um, it's not easy, uh, but I'll tell you, it is definitely, definitely worth it. Uh, next part I want to share a little bit about um, God's will and my life recently. Uh, I will share a brief snippet of how I met my wife. Summer of 2016, I led a youth mission trip to a place in Mexico from the church in Maryland that I was serving in. Now, the person who was the team's point of contact and who I was communicating prior to the trip was my wife's, well, now my wife at the time, now, um, was my wife's sister's husband. And because of that relationship, uh, whenever we would go for lunch or dinner out into the city, uh, my wife would join in. I didn't realize because I was so focused on the trip that people were actually trying to um, connect us. And I'll be honest, I was interested when I first saw her, but, you know, I had to focus on the work at hand, right? Uh, eventually, after uh, two weeks, the team uh, went back to Maryland, but after about two more weeks, I got a friend request from my wife on Facebook. I thought, okay, someone I met on a mission trip uh, probably have like a conversation for maybe a few weeks and will probably eventually stop and that'll be the end of that. Um, we had our initial conversations, but one day she sent me a message. She sent me a message saying that she is interested in me, but if I'm not, or if I'm already seeing someone else, then we can end the conversation right there. I remember when I read that message, I just said, praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Um, we started our relationship uh, long distance as she was in Mexico and I was in Maryland at the time. I will be leaving for Korea at the end of this month, and I'll be coming back mid-November. 
The reason for my absence is because I will be preparing for and attending my wife's visa interview at the U.S. Embassy in Seoul, Korea. The interview date is in mid-late October. Um, I pray that when I come back in November, uh, I will be coming back with my wife. Uh, this has been a grueling, grueling process. We had to live separated from each other soon after marriage for about a year and a half during this whole process. There was another option to get married here in the States and then go through the um, immigrant visa, green card, process together, but my wife had pretty much all of her family in Korea, and I wanted to submit to my now mother-in-law's wishes. I don't have much good things to say about this visa process. It's not something that if someone told me I had to do it again, I would really try not to. It is not something um, you want to do. But it was something that we had to do in order for her to immigrate to the U.S. legally. And I'll be honest, there were definitely times and moments when I even entertained the thoughts of having her come to the U.S. on a different visa, like a student visa or a tourist visa, and just say that we fell in love and got married and just have her here. It might have worked, but I ultimately decided not to do it because I thought that it would be deceptive and would be lying, and my conscience wouldn't allow it. There were many moments of frustration, anxiety, pressure, doubt, and many tears throughout this past year and a half. But God sustained us, and he carried us, and is still carrying us as we are still not finished with this visa process. And as I was thinking about this visa processing, I was led to Scripture. I was led to the prayer that Jesus prayed in Gethsemane. If you can turn to Matthew 26, verse 36 to 46, says this. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible... Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. We don't realize the magnitude and the mind-crushing moment, this is for Jesus. Jesus is about to die for the world's sin and face the wrath of the Father. It's a suffering that we simply cannot comprehend. Jesus prays that the suffering he's about to face will be taken away, but then says, but as you will. It is a powerful act of submission. Jesus prays, if the Father can take away the cup of suffering, then says he wants to submit to God's will. 
my prayers during the year and a half were not like Jesus' prayer. I wanted this visa processing to be finished quickly and smoothly. But instead, it was not quick. And it did not go smoothly. In fact, there were lots and lots of speed bumps and issues. There was a lot, and I tell you, a lot of waiting and uncertainty. And even if I try to find out, always be vague and um, unclear answers. And it forces you to find out on your own. Hours upon hours were spent between my wife and I as we navigated from the initial process to our current phase. But even when we prepared our best, there were moments where we just could not find a clear answer to a question or our situation. But, again, by God's grace, God reminded us through His Word, through His Word, that He is sovereign over this and to trust in Him. Tears of repentance and tears of trust flowed throughout the, year, the past year and a half. God helped us to not only grow in our faith and trust in Him, but also in our relationship with each other. As a new husband, I have much to learn. But as a Christian husband, I believe the Lord was preparing me to better lead and serve my wife. It is a challenging thought for me but I want to leave you with it as well. Are you praying for God's will to be done in your particular situation and circumstance right now? And do you believe that God's will is the best possible result that can come from it happening? Or do you think your will is the best possible outcome? I pray that we will submit to God's will instead of ours. Let's now go into a time of offering and we'll pray at this time. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for um, using me, Lord, to share my testimony this morning. And Father God, I pray that um, the focus was on you and it was all about you and Lord, what you've done in my life and what you are doing currently. Uh, Father God, I pray that as you've shown clearly through uh, my life, I pray, Lord Father, for those who have listened this morning, that they look to you and know that you are also working and guiding and comforting um, and leading all of us. Lord, I pray that we'll be sensitive to your voice as you speak to us uh, in your word. I pray that we would constantly, constantly be going to your word, God, to commune with you. Thank you, Lord. As we go to a time of offering, I pray that we would reflect and think about as we give. Uh, May we give uh, joyfully. Uh, May we give for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, at this time, we'll have a time of offering and a song of reflection. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me I was, was lost But now I'm found Was blind, but now I see 
was grace. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I was was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Dear God, we praise you. Um, we give you back, God, what you've already given us. You only ask for really so little in terms of uh, uh, physical things, God. But I pray that our, our true act of worship, our, our uh, real um, love for you is shown by giving of our lives, our, ourselves to you, God. That, um, that through uh, the actions of your people, and through, through every, all of your creation and everything that is good, God, that people will get to know you. God, and uh, through this offering given to you by your, uh, your faithful servants, God, I pray that um, you, you, um, you show yourself through acts of uh, love to this community, to those that are hurting, to those uh, that need to know you, God, uh, those that don't know you. I pray, God, that... Um, uh, you are glorified. We love you, God, and we praise you because you are good, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us online today. We're glad you're with us. We will continue to hold our 11 a.m. worship online each Sunday until further notice. Only essential staff and volunteers will be in the church building, and we ask that you join us for worship online. All other in-person church meetings are suspended. We really miss seeing everyone. Since we can't hang out in the fellowship hall after service like we used to, we're moving our fellowship time online. After this service ends, we'll post a link to a Zoom meeting on our website, and the password for the meeting is on the screen right now. We hope you'll drop in for a few minutes to say hi and hang out. If you're newer to our church, and especially if you started joining us after we moved everything online, welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. If you would like to learn more about our church, please email our newcomers ministry, and we'd love to answer your questions. If you'd like to join our church as a member, we invite you to take our upcoming two-part new member class. The next classes are October 18th and 25th, right after service. Please email us to let us know you're interested in the class and we'll send you the link to the Zoom meeting. Our first candidate in our senior pastor search, Pastor Daniel Kim, will visit our church next weekend, September 25th to the 27th, on Friday, September 25th at 7.30 p.m. Pastor Kim will preach in an English-language worship service, and on Saturday, September 26th at 1 p.m., we will hold an English ministry question and answer session with Pastor Kim. For details on how to access these events online, please talk with your small group leader. Voting for the senior pastor candidate will happen on September 27th. This week, we'll be conducting a test run of our online voting system. So if you signed up to vote electronically, please look for an email this week from electionrunner.com and follow the instructions. Again, it's on September 27th at 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Even though we are not meeting in our church building, we still need resources to minister to our community. You can give your tithes and offerings online at the URL on the screen, and you can also give to specific funds we have, like our COVID-19 relief fund or Cambodia missions. You can also drop off or mail in a check to the church building. The church address can be found on our website. All of these announcements can also be found online you can always check our church website and our Facebook page for the most up-to-date information. Thank you.
Hello, greeting everyone from Simrip, from Cambodia. Uh, we, me and my wife would like to uh, say hello to you from Simrip. And uh, it's raining season, so we, we, uh, we, we uh, wet nowadays. Hi, uh, hope you're all doing well during this uh, COVID-19. We all here in Simriep in our church have been praying for you every week for God's protection uh, during this COVID-19. Hope that all of you are staying healthy and uh, be blessed by God's grace. And uh, we just send this video just to say hi to all of you and show some activity here in our ministry during this time. So, okay, let's go and uh, see together. Um, let's go. I want to show you something. This is uh, our classroom, our reception office. Yeah, reception office. Yeah, and then here we have Juna Sotsobai. My wife, how are Yeah, she is Juna. Now we are in the clinic room. We we have this clinic for the people to come here and receive treatment for free. And she is one of our good Sunday school children. And now she become the assistant. She got a kind of sickness called chick chick uh, chick what chick gun, similar to uh, dengue fever, but not as dangerous as uh, dengue fever. Last year, many many children and people have died because of dengue fever. But this year, thank God, don't have that much of uh, dengue fever. But they have this new kind, but it's not, not, not dangerous. So you see, she is feeling better now. <laughs> so this is our clinic room. Yeah. And this is her mom. I'm, I'm trying to share the gospel to her also, and she's quite open. And uh, yeah, during this time, it's a raining season in our country, so you can see that it, it's wet. It's wet outside. And yeah. Okay, just to say hi to all of you so that you still remember us in your prayer. Thank you very much. God bless you. See you later. Bye-bye. I'm so glad that Pastor Jan Tong and Siang Lai Samanim can make a guest appearance on this week's weekly update. So for this week, I wanted to give a short interim report as to how many families we have committed to sponsor together as a ministry. And the numbers are rolling in slowly, so this is not at all the final count, but a mid-month update. So the number I'm sharing with you today are commitments from different small groups. It's not at all inclusive of individual donations or other group donations that have gone directly to the missions fund on our church's PayPal, but this is just a commitment that small groups have made over the course of these past two weeks since we've announced the beginning of this project. So from VM, the college ministry, we have nine families that the small groups will be sponsoring five from A3 Young Adults Small Group. And from A1 and A2, the number is actually still pending as I haven't been able to reach out to all of the small group leaders. So, so far we have about 15 families that will be sponsored through our ministry. And I just wanted to share with all of you that one, this is not the final number. And it's actually a little bit higher than that because we're not in counting individual uh, members or families that have decided to sponsor an entire family and things that have gone directly into the account. So we're not counting those. And second, Second, this is not inclusive of the general missions offering that we have set up. This is just a count of the numbers of families that the small groups have made commitments to. Just a reminder that for the, this month of September until October 4th, any of the missions offering that is going into the Cambodia missions offering option will be going to the sponsor family project. And I will give a more final inclusive report at the very end uh, where we will be reviewing the total family number count and how much we're actually sending to Siem Reap Cambodia. Thank you so much again for your prayers and just the commitment that 
that our congregation has made to Pastor Jiang Tong and his church and his ministry. These sponsorships will definitely be lifting a huge burden on many of the families in Siem Reap. So I'm really excited to see how our sponsorship goes and how it continues to grow as the month continues. Thank you so much and see you guys maybe at a different part of my house next week. Bye! Good morning, FKBC, Living Hope Raleigh. My name is Shin, and I am uh, one of the Pastor Search Committee members representing the English ministry. And I'm here to give you a little bit of an interim report on where we are and what we have upcoming that you guys can look forward to. Some of the things that I will be discussing this morning are the process backgrounds, uh, a brief introduction of the candidate. Uh, a lot of this material you have already seen and was presented in uh, the February-March timeframe. But because of COVID, a lot of these things got paused and the process was halted and delayed. But we're now kicking that back off, uh, as you know. But we want to give you a little refresher on some of, these on some of this information and also looking forward, uh, give you an idea of what you can look forward to in this next week and what, what things you need to do to prepare. Just a little, little bit about the background uh, and the process that uh, we used to get to where we are. Uh, about a year ago, after Pastor Choi, our senior, current senior pastor, announced his retirement, a pastor search, senior pastor search committee was formed, representing ordained deacons, lay leaders, uh, uh, a candidate from, uh, sorry, a, a committee member from the women's ministry, uh, and also two representatives from the English ministry, myself and uh, Peter Yoon, who's representing also the, as a member from the ordained deacons. Uh, after that committee was formed, we, we set up a church-wide survey that I'm sure many of you actually filled out, wherein we gathered information as to what are some factors that are important to you? What, what do you think we should be looking for? Uh, and weighted the different factors. And what was interesting was that uh, our church seemed to be pretty uniform in what we were looking for. And also we allowed for uh, comments where you can tell us uh, what are some things that you want us to be mindful of, uh, some things that you're worried about. Uh, and we took that all into consideration when we went through uh, bringing in candidates and interviewing the candidates and going through a screening process. A lot of our recommendations for candidates actually came through uh, our own church members, as well as uh, recommendations from respected leaders in Baptist churches and the Baptist Convention in the United States. Uh, finally, I want to say a quick note on the EM's position. Um, when I was nominated and asked to join this committee, it was made very clear to me uh, that we want to make sure this candidate knows that the English ministry is Today at FKBC, the Living Hope Raleigh, it's, it's different uh, than many other EMs in, in regional churches, immigrant churches, uh, where we're not just the children of families here. We're not just a youth group, uh, but a lot of our families and adult families actually don't even have direct ties to the Korean ministry as it stands today. Uh, so my job was bringing that perspective into the conversations and making sure our candidate was aware of that and asking questions to our candidates to make sure that that perspective and the position that we are in uh, makes sense in his, in his uh, vision for ministering to our church if he were to come in. So I just want to make sure that that's clear, that that was my position and that was uh, my objective and Deacon Yoon's objective as we got, went into the process. So. The final candidate we have is uh, Pastor Daniel Kim. Uh, that's what he looks like. If you joined the coffee hour last week, you got to see him and his wife and interact on a more casual basis. Two children, Yuna, who we hear from on a weekly basis for the missions report, and Yujun, who used to be our drummer on our praise team. Uh, you can see some of his educational background there. Uh, Got his Master's of Divinity at a Campbell Divinity School in 2003, Master of Theology at Duke, and is currently finishing his uh, doctor, doctor of Ministry. Ministry experience, uh, outlined, outlined here starting in 2000. 
In 2005, he was ordained at our church and served as an associate pastor of education uh, for about five years before going to Sacramento as a senior pastor, where he is currently. Uh, the next few so slides are some quotes from, uh, from the pastor search committee. Uh, we were asked to compile just a, a sentence of, or two uh, describing what, what, what was it about Pastor Kim that made us want to recommend him, to think that he was the right fit for this position. Uh, I'll just read a couple of them, and you can pause and, and, and read all of them. I encourage you to do so. You know, one says, the reason I, that I recommend Pastor Kim is he is gifted in small group ministry as well as new members ministry and that his long discipline of the med meditating on the scripture, QT, quiet time, serves as a great example of le leadership. Another, uh, I recommended Pastor Kim because it was clear to me that he fears the Lord and has a deep longing for the sanctity of the body of Christ. I believe Pastor Kim is the right leader to bring the various ministries of our church together to look to God. And this is a very long quote, which I encourage you to read on your own, but I will not read it right now. Okay, the schedule. What is upcoming this following weekend? Uh, on the 25th, we kind of kick off the weekend uh, with a 7.30. The first service is in English. Uh, that will be both face-to-face uh, -face in the sanctuary as well as on Zoom. So I encourage you to join as you can. Uh, of relevance on Saturday is the deacons and the EM staff lunch at noon, followed by an EM Q&A at 1 p.m. Uh, you should be hearing from your small group leaders regarding ways to pose questions, so please be on the lookout for that. Uh, on Sunday, this fall, that, we that weekend, the voting process will open at 3 p.m. and close at 10 p.m. that night. So 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday the 27th. Voting. Voting is open for members of FKBC over 18 years of age, baptized or public confession of faith, and part of a small group ministry. Again, the voting opens at 3 p.m. Sunday, the 27th, and closes at 10 p.m. When we sent out the survey, uh, we got respondents uh, with following numbers. About 343 opted to vote online, 10 on site, and 3 by visitation. The same voting method and process will be used by both the Korean ministry and the EM ministry. Uh, we have a separate voting management committee and you can see the names there. Again, you'll see Peter Yoon as the EM representative on the voting management committee. Just a general overview of the meetings. We will have four services that can be attended face-to-face -face, uh, or online. Uh, the group meetings with EM or the PTA or uh, all those subsec, uh, subgroups, the meetings can be participated again face-to-face -face and through a Zoom webinar, webinar format. And finally, we will be releasing an introductory video from Pastor Kim that will be view viewable beginning on Friday morning. Uh, a final word, uh, our amazing tech team at FKBC uh, set up a a web page, a secure web page on fkbc.org. You can link to the pass the search information page and the password, protect the pass, is protected by password, the password being fkbc2020. And on it, you'll be able to find Pastor Kim's bio and his statement for vision of ministry, all translated into English as well. And they will, this will house recordings of all services and all meetings that take place that weekend. So I encourage you to uh, go to this website to look for this information and uh, read up on him, read up on the documents that he provided prior to the meeting. Uh, as mentioned by Deacon Kim in prior weeks, uh, this is a very important process for our church uh, and we are continuing a uh, fasting prayer relay. I encourage you to sign up at the URL you can see. Um, and also uh, Sunday morning prayer, which begins at 10.15 and goes for 30 minutes uh, over Zoom. So if you're interested, please, I encourage you to join that meeting uh, to pray uh, for this process. And even if, though you don't use this 
particular format. Uh, I, I, I hope that we're all praying uh, that God brings the right leader uh, to continue the work that he has begun here. Thank you. Uh, have a good rest of your, your Sunday. Bye. Thank you, as always, for joining us for Sunday worship service. Again, if you're not a member of our church, we encourage you to uh, think about committing your life and uh, basically all you are, um, yes, as a Christian, but also that entails being part of a family. Uh, we are indeed continuing on with our membership courses, and uh, it's going to be an amazing journey, even though we're still going through COVID. But let's close with a word of prayer and have an amazing Sunday. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you are good. We thank you that you have called uh, servants such as Pastor Sue. Lord God, we thank you for his life, for leading him to our church and just providing all things for him. Lord, they're not all about him, we know that, but Lord God, uh, just to hear of a servant submitting to your will and saying it's all about you, how you would bless him in the process and use him as a powerful blessing. And so indeed, would we learn from this example that you set, and would we, Lord, indeed follow you in faithfulness all the days of our lives. So indeed, would the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be upon you all. Would you go in peace? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a great week.